Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video we have a whole bunch of stuff that we get to sink our teeth into because the lovely easy freezy go follow him his link will be down below has dropped a boatload of information and this is character representation at the top level of Smash Ultimate. What I mean by that is in order to actually be categorized for this list you have to be top 64 in an S tier, top 32 in an A tier, top 16 in a B tier, or top 8 at a C tier. Those are where all these numbers are going to be coming from and as you can see we can see the most and least represented characters at the top level in ultimate you're also gonna have the characters that have won the most event as well as some of the differences between the major regions of smash and it should be a good time and before we get into it, I just want to preface this by saying I'm going to be talking about a lot of specific players in this video and how they've helped their character increase, but I am very aware that one or two players are not going to make certain things go up by multitudes of percentages, though of course they are still going to have the impact. It's overall going to be the player base, but we can't really gauge the player base because there's just a lot of people, so we're mainly just going to be talking about the best reps. So let's start off with just general character representation and we're not going to spend a ton of time on these lower tier characters just because a lot of these characters are bad. It makes sense that they aren't heavily represented. Some characters that I could see going up in 2024, I think Me Gunner and Wee Fit do have a little bit of potential that are not as bad as some of the characters that are surrounding them. Marth is a character that if we're going to see him have success, it's going to be in the late game, though personally I'm not a believer. Pit I think has potential, Lucario has potential, but the characters that I'm very certain should go up in 2024 are going to be me brawler and pikachu these characters are way too low for being as good as they are and i don't expect them to be massively meta in the year just because one of them is a me you don't really see the me's having a lot of representation they're all going to be less than one percent and pikachu is an extremely difficult character but i do think they're going to be more prevalent at the super top level with a couple really notable rest for pikachu you're going to have shiny mark i think kid has a lot of potential with me brawler and the character is going to become fairly prevalent as a secondary at least i think he will be so expect those characters to have have a little bit of a rise maybe more of them in the top eight but not a ton of them running around there's some other top tier characters that are a little bit lower than you'd expect. You have a character like Mega Man that isn't super heavily represented right now. I think Zero Suit is going to go up solely because Mars is going to be attending more events. So that's a good sign. One top tier character that I'm very confident will rise a lot in 2024, though, is going to be Korn. I think that this character is central to the meta right now. She just does so well versus a lot of the current top tier characters. And if you remember the start of Smash Ultimate, everyone and their mother had a pocket Lucina because it just made sense. She was a solid character, fundamentally really good. She wasn't too hard to learn and she was great into a lot of matchups i think corn is going to fill that exact same niche she's such a ridiculously good character and when you have top reps like shattuck and nail getting consistently better i think she's gonna have great success but now we got the characters that are over 1%, starting off with Lucina, who is actually the character that fell off the most this year, dropping 21 spots, and that's not super surprising to me. There's just better choices now in the current meta for Smash Ultimate, like Corrin, for example. I think a lot of the niches that Lucina used to fill aren't super necessary anymore, and she lacks that amazing X factor that some of the other top tier characters have, so it does make sense that she's slowly starting to fall off. Hero is a character that has gotten a lot better, plus 11 spots, and you can thank Beast Mode all for that and there's other good hero players of course but he's just had such a meteoric rise to the character that it is definitely going to help and i could see hero going up in 2024 i think this character has a lot of untapped potential that people are finally starting to realize because the spells and the buffs are ridiculous with this character ice climbers also raising eight spots isn't super surprising just because this is a late game character with their combo routes how much tech that you need to know it makes sense that people are just now figuring them out and we're not going to be talking about every single character, just the ones that have had massive fluctuations, like Shulk, for example. This character has gone down 11 spots, and that's not super surprising. It hasn't been an amazing year for Shulk. Komei still does have some good results, but he's always a character that has untapped potential, and if that potential is finally tapped, I could see him rising, and if it's not, I could also see him falling. He's really just a wild card of a character, but one that I was definitely surprised by is Byleth going up 15 spots and that's with mk leo largely dropping the character completely dropping the character towards the latter half of 2023 and obviously other violet players do exist like rizzy Osu, for example but i'm just very interested to see why violet increased so much and it might have not even been by a massive margin it could have been like like 0.2 percent but that's all violet need to jump ahead of a bunch of characters it's so interesting to think about though ness had a massive drop off it feels like all of the ness players aside from gak just weren't able to get the results that they were able to get last year and you have syrup who is probably the best ness in a America, switching to Steve, so I can definitely see why the character's results dropped off a little bit. 
Next up is going to be Falcon going down by 12 spots. And I think Falcon is continually getting worse, but I think his reps can actually make him go up this year because you got players like Jogabu, Karage, Andrik, who are all at the top level. If Sean and Fatality make their returns to competitive Smash all the time, I could definitely see this character rising. But Falcon is just kind of getting power crept by a lot of characters in this game. I know it feels weird to say that about Falcon because he hits so hard. He's got great kill confirms. His damage output is solid, but is it better than some of the characters above him? I wouldn't say so. And his recovery is just such a big weak spot that's really hard for him to have success in the current meta you're gonna have ryu going up by 10 spots and you can thank Iken and osimo for that definitely those guys have had incredible years and yes i'm aware that there are other ryu players but Iken and osimo definitely doing a majority of the heavy lifting there you're going to have Pac-Man going down by 9 spots. And I think this is largely just because T was not as prevalent this year. Obviously, he still had good results, but just not good enough to keep his character in that top 25 area or top 20 area, I should say. And I think Pac-Man is actually going to have a really good 2024, especially in contrast, whether it be from the return of T or other Pac-Man players popping up. Since he had a great start to the year at Luminosity, makes big moves. I think Veggie is a very talented player if he gets to travel more. And I think Pac-Man has a lot of potential. We've seen his potential before at the top top level from T and we're just gonna have to see it again this year Pokemon trainer is gonna be falling 12 spots and this one does make sense Quid just didn't really do that much in 2023 especially compared to 2022 where he was able to win a super major event and Atelier Atelier hasn't had as much success with the character in 2023 now he's 2024 he's able to win cafeteria cup right at the start with pretty much solo Pokemon trainer so maybe we see PT have a bit of a rise probably not but a man can dream right also, I find it interesting that Ryu is so much lower than Ken. It's only by 0.2%, but I think Ken is way worse than Ryu, so I'm very surprised to see the Ken players just having better results. You're going to have Greninja going up 12 spots, and I think a lot of that credit has to go for Tarek and the stellar year that he has had, but shout out to all the other Greninja players because this has always been a character that was right on the edge of being one of the top two of this game, had so much potential, but just wasn't quite there, but I think in 2024, we could start seeing this character be one of the more prevalent top two of this game to the level that Japan thinks they're on because I know Japan thinks Greninja is absolutely broken, and I'm kind of starting to see it. you're going to have Peach going up 13 spots, and this makes a lot of sense. Peach is absolutely a late game character especially with all the turnip combo stuff that has been discovered with her recently characters or players rather than like mu days umeki ike ling there's so many amazing peach players that have just had stellar years and i think she's honestly going to keep going up also, I just want to shout out Luigi for being almost top 20. This character is definitely not top 20 on a twos, but the Luigi players have just had such spectacular results, and the results are even better in 2024, so there's definitely a chance that he breaks into the top 20 this year, which is kind of ridiculous. You're also going to have Falco as our first character in the top 20, like Luigi, you wouldn't expect him to be this high, and he went up 9 spots this year, and it kind of makes sense because there's so many good Falco players at the top level, Matsunabe, Masa, and Tilde, just to name a few, those guys are incredible, and Tilde and Masa didn't even go to that much stuff this year, so if they travel more, I know Tilde is planning on doing so, I could easily see Falco raising even higher on this list, especially with the character's combo game getting pushed further and further every day, but we got to talk about the big winner of 2023, and it's not even close. Bayonetta going up 19 spots. I didn't need a list to tell me that she is easily the character that was the most improved this year. And I think she's going to continue improving in 2024. She's one of the best late game characters in the game because of how extensive her combo routes are and how good her neutral is. And I'm not going to name Bayonetta players just because there's too many and I'll forget them. But there is a lot of them at the top level. Also, I think it's interesting that Sonic is only going to be at 18, and he ended up going down 5 spots this year, despite the mass success from Sonic and Ken, as well as Wrath becoming a lot more prevalent, and I don't really think Sonic is going to be a character that ever breaks in the top 10 just because of the way that you have to play him, but it's interesting to look at. You're going to have Olimar going up by 9 spots, and this is a pretty interesting one, because there's a lot of very good Olimar players in Japan and America, but I don't see too many in Europe and Mexico unless I'm just straight up missing them, and if I am, my bad, it's not at this, I swear, but it's just interesting to see how those two regions kind of propelled this character forward, whereas you look at a character like Bayonetta, for example, she is very well represented in every single region of the game, so just something to think about. A character that I think is definitely going to be in the top 10 next year, though, is going to be Game Watch. He ends up going up 14 spots this year, and I think 2023 is the where everyone kind of realized okay this character is problematic he has the best advantage state in the game you cannot touch his shield his neutral is super hard to deal with his damage output is ridiculous he has some of the best lead drive in the game and he's also very easy on top of all that stuff game and watch is definitely going to go up
I should also mention before we get into the top 10 that the only character that was in the top 10 for 2022 that wasn't in the top 10 for 2023 is Samus. She's going to be falling by three spots and she can definitely get back into the top 10 next year. There's so many amazing Samus reps and this character is extremely broken, but it's just something interesting to think about. And also, I think I might have underrated Mario on my tier list video if you watched that one because this character has a lot of very good Mario players, a lot of very good results, and he's kind of broken. But here we are in the top 10. As I mentioned, the only character to fall out of the top 10 last year is Samus. So most of these guys are kind of just sticking around. And our new addition to the top 10 is going to be Cloud. So everyone clap it up for Cloud. Congrats on getting into the top 10. And I'm honestly kind of surprised to see this character this high. Not because he's bad by anything. Cloud is a ridiculous character. He's pretty close to top 10 on a tier list. And you're going to have the best representation in the entire world with Spargo playing him a lot. But aside from Spargo, it feels like there is a massive drop off from other Cloud players. And they definitely still exist. Yoshi he is really good and Hans PV is really good though I don't think he went to a bunch of stuff in 2023 but shout out to the cloud players because they just got some good results here you're gonna have Diddy Kong at nine and Joker at eight and I'm kind of surprised to see these guys so high not because they're bad by any means but there's just easier top tier characters in this game you look at Game & Watch Min Min Kazuya Sams I would expect to see those guys in the top 10 rather than Joker and Diddy Kong who are extremely difficult but also are very well represented you're gonna have Tweak for Diddy Kong and Aaron in America and there's like a thousand very good diddy kong players in japan i think that's like their most represented character just behind steve or something it's crazy and joker's also gonna have so many reps with mk leo omega subaki's had an amazing year as well so it definitely makes sense that these characters are as high but i would just expect some of the easier ones to take the cake you're gonna have wolf as our seventh most represented character and this checks out wolf is very good and he's one of the most represented characters at the top of i mean obviously you can see that but in every region there are very prevalent wolf players you're gonna have ouch and jackal from america you got a Torie and masha from japan you got players like orion in europe and i can't name any mexican ones off the top of my head i'm very sorry mexico but wolf is just a very good character and he's a character with a lot of untapped potential in my opinion with the futsal out of shield stuff with a lot of his shine combos so i'm very interested to see if wolf players find start pushing their character in 2024 or if he's just going to stay as that fundy's neutral monster you're going to have roy as our sixth most represented character and this one definitely was a little bit surprising to me because i don't think that this was a super great year for roy and as you can see he does fall two spots but still is very high up there and i think the reason for that is that roy is still very well represented you're just not seeing as many roy players get into the top eight and as we know that's not the only thing that matters we've already talked about the metric and roy is still a phenomenal character and it's not like all the roy players just disappeared all of a sudden just because cola stopped going to events doesn't mean that the character was dead it just means that we didn't see him as much in the top eight but all the other Roy players were still doing amazing, so shout out to y'all. You're gonna have Aegis at five, and this is a character that I think could go up and down next year. And it's really interesting because it's gonna be a race between Aegis players and pretty much everyone else. Are Aegis players gonna be able to figure out their broken advantage state and start doing what Game Watch is doing to people? And are they gonna know when to utilize Pyro to ensure that they're not staying on her too long? They're playing Mithra when they need to, and they're using Pyro only to secure the stock or are people going to get way better at edge guarding the character where they just become way too inconsistent we're really going to have to wait and see but i'm excited to see who wins the race and our top four characters nobody is really surprised by you're going to have steve rob and Politana as our top three they've been the top three for i think two years in a row now and snake being our fourth most represented character makes a ton of sense to me they're the only characters in the game that have more than a three percent pick rate at the top level which is super interesting to think about and i don't think Politana is on the level of rob steve and snake but she's just so easy she's got such a solid game plan and i do think that she's slowly getting worse and worse but the character overall is still very strong and there's just so many amazing politano players running around in every single region that it definitely makes sense why she's this high now you're going to have characters that have just one events and this is from c tiers all the way to p tiers and we're not going to be spending as much time on this one but i highly recommend that you check it out because there's just a lot of really cool things to look at and you can see pretty much everyone that has won a notable event this year you're going to have steve with the most wins by a fairly significant margin coming in at 29 then you're going to have game and watch at second but to be fair a lot of that is just mia because he has won 16 events which is pretty crazy the most in the entire world you're going to have rob and kazia at 15 you're going to have wario and wolf at 14 but Wario is only represented by Glutony, so shout out to Gluto for being good as every single Wolf player in the entire world. Some characters that I think are going to get more wins in 2024 are characters like Korra, who already has a decent amount from Neo and Shattuck, as well as that one Leo win. I think if Shanimar gets the opportunity to travel more, he's going to pick up a lot more dubs. I know for a fact that Mario is going to get a lot more wins. You're going to have Sky J winning 11 events with Incineroar, which is also fairly absurd. And we're going to be moving on now just because a lot of this is just looking at players that have won one event over and over. 
over again, but please go look at this. It's just a really cool list. And finally, we have the three biggest regions in Smash Ultimate and their 10 most represented characters. And it's pretty interesting to see that all of them have a different character as their most dominant one. You're going to have Steve in America with a 4.8%. You're going to have Diddy Kong in Japan, which isn't super surprising to me, with a 36 But he's going to be directly tied with Steve, which is pretty funny. And you're going to have Europe with a 56 blowing Steve out of the water. And this is the most represented character out of anyone in this list. Europe loves Samus. What can I say? And it's interesting to look at which characters are represented in every single region. The only one to appear on all three lists are Steve, Rob, and Aegis, and they all check out. Those characters are ridiculous. I would expect Snake to be on all of these lists, but he's not going to appear on Europe, and that does make sense because there are, like, no good Snake players in Europe. And honestly, I think it's one of the flaws of the region because he's such an important character everywhere else in the world that when Europeans are traveling down, they don't have the experience that you need to fight Snake. And Snake is one of the hardest matchup checks in the entire game. I'd argue he's the second hardest matchup check in the game just behind steve so if you're a european to and you want to make your region better you got to start flying out players like hurt apollo kage mvd i don't care what it takes just get the snakes to europe you're also going to have a couple characters that are represented by just two of the regions like north america and europe for example they're going to be sharing wolf Politana and Roy and I think Politana could have a lot of success in Japan the character is fairly underutilized there and I think the way people play the game in general she actually does fairly well in that environment so if you're a Polu player and you've got some extra change rolling around maybe consider a Japan trip for Japan and Europe, the only character that they share between each other is going to be Cloud. And it's kind of funny that Cloud is in the top 10 for both of these regions, but not for North America, where we have Spargo and Enhanced PV, just something to think about. And then finally, you're going to have North America and Japan sharing Joker. And this makes a lot of sense. The top two Joker players in the world, top five Joker players in the world, are all going to be coming from NA and Japan. And finally, you're going to have characters that are only represented by one reach. You're going to have North America with Bayonetta and Mario as their stands out. And Bayo makes a lot of sense. Every single region has an amazing Bayo player. Tama P is going to be from Japan. Bloom Forever is going to be from Europe. Lima is going to be from North America. But we also have Mar. And we also have Death Spade. We also have Geist. There's good Bayo players everywhere, but there's just so many more good Bayo players in NA. So that checks out. And Mario is the exact same thing. You're going to have players like Spam Cop. You're going to have players like Skitty the Pooh's that pop up here. Dark Wizzy. Karama is going to be the crown jewel. You're going to have Super Dog. There's just so many amazing Mario players that have had pretty spectacular years. Next up is going to be Europe. You've got three unique characters in Greninja, Wario, and Samus. For Greninja, it makes a lot of sense. Europe has always thought fairly highly of this character. Japan has as well. I'm starting to think that America was just kind of wrong about Greninja. This character is actually good, and you're definitely seeing the representation in Europe. South to Tarek especially, so we're going to have to wait and see for that in 2024. Wario being here, no surprises there. You're obviously going to have Gluttony putting in a lot of the heavy lifting, but Crepsolet is another amazing Wario player. And then finally, you're going to have Samus as the most popular character out of any of the regions by a fairly significant margin and this makes a ton of sense siski spectral quick there's just so many amazing samus players in europe this character is everywhere and our final region is going to be Japan. They've got four unique characters in Fox, Min Min, Olimar, and Diddy Kong. And I was honestly kind of surprised to see Fox this high up. And obviously, there are very good Fox players in Japan, like Basari Man and Kananabe especially. But I didn't think it was enough to be in the top 10. And as you can see, there's a pretty big gap between Fox and the rest of the characters in the top 10. So something interesting to think about. The other three characters, though, makes a ton of sense. There are so many good Min Mins in Japan. There are so many good Olimars. And there are so many good Diddy Kong players. Also, Diddy Kong is going to be tied with Steve, and the way that I think the tiebreakers were broken is based off of secondary, so there's more Diddy Kong mains than there are Steve mains, which is also something that's fairly interesting to think about, but Steve, as a secondary character, does make a lot of sense, and as I already established, all of our Mimin are just so much more common in Japan than they are anywhere else in the world, and I don't know if that's ever going to change. I think it might change for Mimin just because of how ridiculous the character is, but I feel like Olimar is probably just going to stay in Japan. And with that, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. This was super interesting to look at just which characters are getting the most representation at the top level of Smash Ultimate. And as always, Easy Freezy's link will be down below. Be sure to follow him because this took a lot of work and also it just is really well done. And yeah, that's all I got to say. If there's anything I got wrong, left out, or if you just want to say hi, leave a comment down below. Be sure to sub while you're down there and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.